Joining me now, Brandon Arnold, National Taxpayers Union Executive Vice President, and Annika Green, Reach Global Strategies founding partner and former President George W. Bush speechwriter. Brandon, I'm going to go ahead and start with you and start with some of these prices. Lydia talked about the food prices, um, some of them specifically like eggs up 33 percent, butter up 26 percent, much higher than the average. Meat prices are up as well. But gasoline up 59.9 percent, utilities up 38 percent, airline tickets up 43 percent, public transportation. 23.7% and rents across the country are up more than 30%. This is a tough time for Americans right now. And this president says, well, the numbers are unacceptable, but they're backward looking. Should we accept that as an explanation? No, absolutely not. This is more of the blame game that we've heard time and time again from this president. He's blamed these higher prices on Putin. He's blamed them on big oil. He's blamed them on your local gas station. And now he's blaming them on outdated data. Well, guess what? The data is what the data is. And everybody that knows, everybody that goes to the grocery store, everybody that goes to the gas station or buys virtually anything today knows that that data is pretty accurate and pretty timely. They're facing higher prices when they buy food, when they buy clothing for their kids when they buy furniture, when they buy new, new cars. Everything right now seems to be facing double-digit price increases. So the president can't simply explain his way out of this by saying the data is old. And Annika, when it comes to Karine Jean-Pierre, the press secretary, um, she continues to use the phrase Putin's price hike. She continues to accept no responsibility from the ad administration's point of view uh, with respect to what's happening with inflation. And they keep trying to blame the Fed as well. Jerome Powell's back is up against a wall, too. I mean, as somebody who used to write speeches and, and help the president communicate with the public, I know she's in a tough spot. It's hard to explain this, but would it be better just to own it? They can't own it because they would have to admit that the Biden administration's own policies are fueling energy hikes, are fueling food price increases. And it's only going to get worse with food prices. I was talking to a farmer yesterday who was telling me that the Biden EPA on June 30th released a decision to make it harder for any farmers to use a crucial product called atrazine. It's used on corn and sorghum. And because of this, they're not going to be able to grow corn. Imagine right. that. Corn is used in fuel. It's used to feed livestock. And it's going to we're going to be seeing a food famine in underdeveloped companies and possibly insecurity in higher ones. I'm so glad you brought that up because so many times people will say to me, oh, you're constantly saying that this administration is regulating uh, the farmers and they're over regulating the energy companies. What are you talking about? It's little things like that that they do and they pass them off under the table um, that are, you know, essentially holding back the ability to produce more supply in this country. And Brandon, this is a supply side problem when it comes to food and also when it comes to gasoline. Yet you've got the president and he's in Jerusalem now. He'll be going to Saudi Arabia. Um, some ridiculous excuse. They said he was going to fist bump and, and he doesn't want to shake MBS's hand. So, the, the, you know, no handshakes on this trip. That's what they started out by saying. I mean, it's really, like, really ridiculous. Yeah, I think the focus is absolutely got to be on supply. And why not domestic supply instead of going to the Saudis? We can produce more energy here in the United States, and that will drive down food costs. That will drive down virtually everything. And one thing that bugs me so much about the president going out there and blaming Putin and blaming external factors, we have a higher inflation rate in this country than, than does Canada, than does Mexico, Australia, Japan, Germany, France. So many other countries have dealt with this inflation crisis, which is a global issue, but they've dealt with it much better better than we have. And that's why we are dealing with some of the highest inflation rates in the entire world. Yeah, I only have a minute left, but Annika, final word to you. They've got to start listening to the people that they're relying on and not blaming them. So they've got to listen to energy producers. They've got to stop playing a shell game with what's really going on. They can't say, use your leases and then not grant them drilling permits. They've got to listen to farmers when they say, we need this product and you need to follow the regulatory process. Yeah, no, these are great points. Guys, great to have you both here with us tonight. We'll have you back soon. Thank you.